After a night of celebration, we woke Sunday morning to find the city of Ushuaia a virtual ghost town. A soccer game or a football cup or something like that had been the topic of conversation at the bar the previous night, but we paid little attention. We were preoccupied with La Pataya. The end of the road on the Argentine side of Tierra del Fuego lies 25 kilometers beyond Ushuaia in Parque Nacional Tierra del Fuego on the shores of La Pataya Bay, a small bahia off the Beagle Channel, or technically about 300 meters shy of it. After paying a king's ransom, we were officially in the national park and on our way to the second end of the road in as many days. Normally, this parking lot is packed with tour buses, overlanders, and bucket listers, eager to check this box. But today, we have the place to ourselves. This is the end of the road, huh? This is it, baby. Into the road. After a few high fives and a failed walk-in sequence. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? What? Uh, really was Chad decided to wax poetic about riding the Americas. To the Arctic in both the United States and Canada, to Dead Horse and Tuck, and now I've ridden to the end of the road. But that got old real quick. Then Diego got emotional about his first real moto expedition. I don't know, I probably will tell you when I'm, when I'm finished, because right now I'm in a, this sort of a cloud. But every day has been very different, and it's been a great adventure. And, and learning a lot. I think they call that cloud a hangover. <laughs> well, I don't remember. <laughs> okay, well, bless them. After the guys were done being epic, we took the photos you've got to take before making the short walk to the actual La Pataya Bay. After our nature walk, we got back on the bikes and retraced our steps to the ghost town that was Ushuaia. We were shocked and very humbled to see the entire city turn out to celebrate our achievement. And then slightly embarrassed to realize they were in fact celebrating Argentina's first World Cup win since 1986. After soaking it all in, cleaning up, and partying with a few locals, we retired to a small pizzeria to plan the next day's route. It was pretty, but it wasn't anything spectacular. And obviously what we did... Early the next morning, we packed up, fueled up, and departed Ushuaia. While most of Argentina was still in bed, or busy nursing a hangover. At the pizzeria, we had decided to try our luck on Provincial Road J to a remote estancia and naval outpost on the Beagle Channel, keeping our eyes open along the way for campsites and any excuse to get out the drone.
As ideal a campsite as this was, our day was just beginning, so we bookmarked it for another time and continued along the southernmost coast of Tierra del Fuego. Pushing on, we happened across Estancia Haverton, founded by Anglican missionaries in 1886. A great place to take in the views and stop for a hot cup of coffee. This road, while not nearly as remote or rough, due in large part to its proximity to Ushuaia, has a very similar look and feel to its Chilean counterpart, Y-895, south of Cameron, on the other side of the island. Alternating between the coast and native forest, over tidal rivers and across cliffs, the beauty of this place is boundless and very distracting, sometimes dangerously so. Descending from the coastal range of the Sierra Lucio Lopez, something shiny at the end of a rough track caught Chad's eye. And luckily, shiny had a ladder. To the top of a lighthouse at the mouth of the Beagle Channel, off the infamous Drake Passage, Departing our deceivingly precarious pit stop, Chad made a wager that didn't pay off. At least not the way he expected. Well, about to owe me five bucks. His face is all red, poor thing. Yeah. Not out yet. Still was a good bet on my part. Continuing east along the coast and crossing the Moat River, we reach the remote naval outpost and the end of Provincial Road J.
Backtracking across the river to another rough track, we discovered the perfect campsite for the night where Chad's bet finally paid off. But look, our eggs are fine. Yeah. What did I do? <laughs> so this is a clear case of karma because when we stopped at the lighthouse, I bet her $5 that you were gonna fall. And you almost did. You almost did, but now look what I did trying to turn around. Uh, but I bet that he wouldn't fall. I won, but I, I still, since I was with you. Yeah, well, since you're with I, me. I took a dirt nap. Your, your bad karma's being with me. Got it, you got it. Comes with a kickstand. I find the kickstand works much better when you want to park. Why are you still filming? This is embarrassing. <laughs> That's why exactly what I'm filming. Don't film me. I'm, I'm hoping you fell again. <laughs> Cut. Five dollars. Right? <laughs> After a night of national celebration and a long day in the saddle, the guys pulled out the whiskey and their weenies. Dig oh, fricassee, fricassee. <laughs> Diego's gonna fall in the fire. Look, this is the way you make a weenie. I'm a weenie expert. Yeah, I bet you are. <laughs> it's just cooling down. <laughs> my boot. <laughs> Leave my weenie alone, man. I'm serious. Leave my weenie alone. That's perfect, man. You don't understand. You don't understand the South American way, man. Jesus Christ. That's perfect. It's horrible. It's horrible. Oh shit. <laughs> Did you fall down? <laughs> hey, turn around your weenie. It's gonna get burned. Dana, let me see yours again. My weenie's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> hey, knock it off. My wind is getting cooked. <laughs> I think we've had too much whiskey. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Oh. Take your winnie, man. Take your winnie. <laughs> Take your winnie. <laughs> 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 <laughs>